This is my completion statement on a shared ownership flat where I walked away with over £107,000. Three years ago, I bought my first home in London, which was a two bed flat on a shared ownership scheme, owning 40%. Recently, I sold that flat and found a huge flaw in the shared ownership system which allowed me to walk away with over a hundred thousand pounds of equity despite only putting in forty thousand pounds to start with it's all above board there's nothing illegal but it's a really interesting problem with the whole government shared ownership system this video isn't to brag or to flaunt the cash it's simply to highlight a huge problem in the shared ownership model and actually try and help anyone who's stuck in the shared ownership system with a property where they might not be able to sell it or they want to try and get some more equity to move up in the property ladder. I used to commute into London and into the city every single day before the pandemic and have done loads of videos on the channel about that. But since COVID have been working fully remote for the past three and a half years and because of that decided to quit my job at Lloyd's Banking Group and instead go fully remote at a tech startup. The whole idea was to move out of London, get more space, get a garden, get some fresh air and ultimately like many others post pandemic join the race for space and improve my quality of life rather than living in the centre of a polluted city. The problem is Covid really stalled the flat market in London. People didn't want small flats in zones 1 and 2 and thus the market went very very flat with not much interest which makes it very hard to sell at a good price. But I had to take the plunge and 2022 was the year that I decided to sell the flat and try and get out of London for good. To compare the difference, from 2012 to 2015, the London flat property market surged in some areas almost 60%. When I bought my flat, it went up about 1% every single year, which was very, very flat. Which is a shame because I bought a flat in London hoping to ride some of what is one of the most incredible property markets in the world, but instead got nothing. If you're new to shared ownership, it's effectively a scheme where you can buy a percentage of a house. It's great for those who can't afford a full property or particularly useful in London where prices are extremely extortionate. Rather than buying the whole flat, you buy a percentage, otherwise known as a share, and you get a mortgage on your share and then you just pay rent on the share that isn't yours. And the idea is that you can staircase up to full ownership over a certain amount of time. The reality is that Unofficial figures say that about 5-8% to 8 of people actually staircase to full ownership. And the reality is the monthly cost is probably the same of owning the property completely outright with a mortgage, but it helps affordability because you don't need as much of a deposit to finance the property. To kick things off, when you sell a shared ownership property, you have to get a RICS surveyor to value the property. And whatever that valuation says is then handed to the housing association who then take that price at face value and that's what the property has to be sold at. Now the first valuation that I got through was £575,000 which was about £7,000 more than what I bought it for that was a little bit yeah, you know, not very good. I then challenged that same surveyor and they ended up raising the price to £620,000. So there was some room for negotiation here because you have to remember as a shed owner, I only get 40% of whatever that increase is. So it was in my interest to maximize the value as much as possible and sell it at that price to another shed owner through the system. So let that sink in. I managed to sweet talk a surveyor to go from £575,000 up to 620. That's a huge jump. And that's when I learned that Rick surveyors kind of go in the middle. They can go lower, they can go higher, and they have some subjective room for movement as long as there's good sold comparables in the area. And in London, where there's lots of flats, there was definitely a broad spectrum of flats in the area being sold for different prices, kind of depending on the quality. So I handed that £620,000 valuation into the housing association, who then came back the next day straight away giving me open market permission rather than selling it to another shared owner i could now sell it to a full owner with no shared ownership this is because the flat was too expensive because the government imposed income restrictions it's eighty thousand pounds outside of london and ninety thousand pounds inside of london based on all of the calculations that they use if a property is worth too much it means that 
no one can have a deposit big enough or small enough and have an income that's within the limits to afford a property of that size. And therefore it becomes unsellable through shared ownership. And then they give you permission to sell it on the open market, which also means that you don't have to sell it at the valuation price. You can choose any price on the open market. This is known as a simultaneous staircase and onward sale transaction, where you use the buyer's funds to staircase the flat to full ownership and then instantly sell it to them as that full share. So they have no involvement with the housing association whatsoever. It also meant that I didn't have to use any of my money to staircase from 40% to 100% to be able to sell the flat and get out of my own home. So I did what any unreasonable person does in London and went to Foxton's to try and get a quote on how much it would be to sell the flat and their rough estimation on the valuation of the flat. Now, if you haven't heard of Foxton's, they are the classic villain in the London property market with extortionate rental prices, and rinsing people for money left, right, and center. Now, I got a valuation from Foxton's, and bearing in mind I bought the flat at the end of 2018 for 567,000 pounds on a 40% share, Foxton's said that they valued the flat at 550 pounds. That's almost 17,000 pounds less than what I bought it for. And here's the best bit, they wanted to charge me over £19,000 in fees and VAT for the privilege of selling my flat at a loss. At this point, I felt completely trapped. I had the option to sell my flat at a loss and it would cost me a substantial amount of money to get out of the shared ownership system and to fundamentally move out of London. To make matters worse, when I spoke to the housing association about this, they said that I had to sell the flat at the price of the valuation. So I had to sell that flat for £620,000. If I sold it for less on the open market, I would have to pay them the entire difference. So if I had sold the flat for 550,000, I would owe the housing association 70,000 pounds in cash, which I did not have. And then I asked them, well, what if I sell the flat for more than the valuation? Surely you don't keep the money or we don't split it. Surely that's my money. And they said, yes, if I sell it, Quite rightly, I get to keep all of that money, which is the difference between the valuation and the sales price. And then it hit me. This was the light bulb moment. If I could get an updated valuation from a Rick Surveyor that was low enough, where I could then sell the flat at a reasonable amount on the open property market, I could pocket the difference in the middle. And then I got thinking even more, how far to the extreme could I push this to go from what is a £70,000 loss to potentially six figures? So I paid for three valuations, each costing around £300. Now, I asked these surveyors, because I pay them privately, to be as conservative as possible and actually ask them to give me the lowest possible amount they would be willing to give under their RICS accreditation. You see, the benefit of paying for your own private valuation compared to when you have a mortgage the surveyors that work for banks are very, very strict and there is no room for negotiation. When you're paying for your own private valuation, which is what happens with a housing association, because you are their customer, there's some wiggle room and some negotiation in the price. Now, the surveyors told me they typically go for a price in the middle, meaning they can go down or they can go up because the whole thing is completely subjective. Now, I had valuations ranging from £565,000 up to £620,000. And of course, I went for the lowest possible this time round and asked that surveyor to go even lower and pushed him down to £560,000. That's £7,000 less than what I bought the flat for three years prior. So I handed the new valuation of 560 k into the housing association, which they have to accept and I still had permission to sell the flat on the open market for something more reasonable and realistic for the area. Now that's the valuation sorted, now I had to sell the flat. Now I know that I wanted to avoid the estate agents for the expensive fees because I didn't own the entire flat, so instead I used one of the online estate agents, particularly Strike, to sell the flat for zero fees but still list the property on Rightmove and Zoopla and instead I would do the viewings, I would negotiate with the buyer, and I would push the sale through to completion myself without the help of a true, real estate agent. After three weeks, I managed to get an offer for £620,000, which, yes, is £70,000 more than what Foxton said they would sell it for, but 620 k I think was a very fair 
market value in the area. And the flat was very nice. It had concierge, it had a gym, had beautiful gardens and a pond. So it was more premium compared to others in the area and was fair. So this meant that I would buy the flat for 560,000 pounds as a total updated share and sell it for 620,000 pounds. Thus keeping that difference in the middle between the 560 and the 620. And of course, to do this, this was done through the solicitors using the buyer's funds. Now the eagle eyed people here in the comments might be wondering about stamp duty, because when you staircase a flat, technically you're purchasing a property and thus stamp duty is due. Well, when I bought the flat, it was under 300K as a first time buyer. So paid zero stamp duty on my 40% share. I then claimed relief 34, on the stamp duty land tax form. Now I've read lots of news articles on this and a lot of people have wrongly paid stamp duty on a simultaneous staircase and exchange completion transaction. That's because solicitors who are deciding to do this aren't tax experts and they're getting this wrong. However, in solicitors defense, the guidance from HMRC is very, very, very poor on this subject matter. Relief 34 is a sub sale relief transaction, which is where you need a sub sale to happen to enable the true sale to happen, which is exactly what happens in this scenario and means shared owners like myself don't have to pay huge amounts of stamp duty on a share of a property that isn't ours. Okay, so the final figures. So I bought the flat for 567,000 pounds at the start of 2019 on a 40% share. So my share was 227,000 pounds. I bought the remaining share of the flat, the 60%, at a value of 336,000 pounds on a full valuation of 560,000. But this was then sold to the buyer at the full market value of 620,000 pounds, meaning I bought my share at 560 and sold it at 620 simultaneously all on the same day, thus pocketing the 57,000 pounds equity made between the 560 and the 620 and factoring in my 40% share, which creates that small difference. But all of this was using the buyer's funds. So I bought the full value of the flat at a grand total of 563,000 pounds and then instantly sold it for 620,000 pounds, thus keeping that 57,000 pounds as equity for myself. So you have 620,000 pounds from the buyer minus 336,000 pounds for the value of the 60% part of the flat that I didn't own minus another 177,000 pounds that I owed the bank back for the mortgage. That leaves a total of 107,000 pounds for me. 40K of that was the original deposit that I put into the property. 10K of that was equity from the mortgage payments over three years and 57,000 pounds of that was tax-free cash that I made purely and simply through the loophole of the shared ownership system. And all of this is tax-free because when it's your own home, you don't pay capital gains tax on your primary residence that you live in. And of course, there was no stamp duty to pay because we used the subsale relief to ensure that the transaction was linked and therefore no SDLT was due on the staircasing part of the transaction because it was linked to the sale to the private buyer. And lastly, using strike, I paid no estate agent fees whatsoever to sell the flat, so zero costs there. So the only thing I needed to pay was leasehold fees, legal packs, and then the solicitor's fees on my end. And there you have it. I managed to walk away with an extra 57,000 pounds completely tax free from a relatively flat property market in London. Hopefully, if you're a shared owner, this has opened your eyes up to the potential to try and escape the system and make sure that you walk away with some kind of equity or profit. Now, everything is completely above board on this and legal. I just followed the system and played the game, but it does feel like a huge fundamental loophole and flaw in the way shared ownership works. This only happened because I was able to sweet talk Rick surveyors to get them to bump down the prices on the valuations. The fact that we used the subsale relief on the stamp duty and used an online estate agent to completely minimize all of the costs and maximize the potential of the property. And it absolutely blows my mind that this one transaction and this sale could have gone from a scale of a 70,000 pounds loss to instead walking away with over a hundred thousand pounds. And I was completely in control of those scenarios. I could have gone for the Foxton's valuation and sold it at a huge loss, but instead I saw the potential, spotted the loophole and rinsed it. If you enjoyed this video, then check out this one here, which explains whether you should buy a property now or wait until next year, diving into all of the Bank of England figures. Click on this video here and I will see you in the next video.